Hi, this is Christoph, and this is the first episode of a series on Redis. In this series, we're going to look at a few Redis use cases so that you can see what Redis has to offer. Now, Redis is a NoSQL data structure server, and it allows you to store information in data via keys and values. Now, one of the main differences between Redis and a, com a competitor like Memcached is that Redis even though it's stored in memory, has built-in persistence, which means that your data that's in memory periodically gets backed up to disk. And you can go in the configurations and change this period. You can do it via, by time, how much time has gone by, or by how many times a key has been set, or how many writes you have. Right? This is a big difference because Memcached does not offer this uh, or memcached, I'm sorry, does not offer this built-in persistence out of the box. Another big difference is just the amount of, or, or the, the types of features that Redis offers that are not offered in mem memcached. That's why a lot of different uh, developers and companies are moving towards Redis nowadays. So let's get started here with an example. And I have a fresh install of Laravel. I used Homestead to install it. And as you can see, I'm SSH'd into the machine right now. And I just want to show you that out of the box, Redis comes pre-installed. So we have the command line interface. And as you can see, um, uh, we're connected to the local host here with port 6379. And since, like I said, this is a clean install, we don't have any keys yet. So there you go, no keys set. Uh, the reason I want to prove that this works is because even though Redis is installed on the server, we don't have a library for PHP to use in Laravel just yet, right? So if we take a look at our uh, app directory here, you'll see that if we go in composer.json, we don't have a PHP Redis library anywhere loaded here. And so if we tried to access Redis right now, it would not work. And let me demonstrate that with an example by going in our app and then HTTP and routes.http. All right, and this is the default routes that came with Laravel 5. And so if we go to our page and we look at it, okay, we see that it's loading here. But now let me swap this default load and instead try to access Redis. And you'll see we'll get an error because we still have to install uh, our library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to access it and just try to print the result. Let me get my semicolons. All right. And so once we do that, we'll see class P Redis client has not been found. Why, so why is it, first of all, we know that P Redis is not in Laravel by default, but why is it even looking for P Redis? Where in the code does this happen? Well, if we take a look at our vendor folder and then look for Laravel, go in framework, source, illuminate, and then we scroll down, we see that there's a Redis folder. So what's going on in this Redis folder? We have a service provider here, and this is being loaded in the application. And uh, as you can see, you know, even if you're not familiar with service providers, don't worry about it. However, I highly recommend that you check out the documentation on it because service providers offer a lot of powerful features. But anyway, what I really want you to look at here is this block of code right here. As you can see, we are binding a singleton object of Redis. And this is where we're naming it Redis. So that's why I'm able to go here and try to make the Redis here because we're naming it here. And inside of this singleton function, we are returning a new database and passing in these uh, this parameter here, right? This is trying to access conf Redis configurations in our app array. We're able to access this app array because we're extending service provider, okay? but. Why are we trying to access this array? What, what is this array? Well, if we go in our config again, if I can find it, here it is, and we look at database.php, scroll all the way at the bottom, you'll see that we have our Redis array here. And this is what's being loaded 
in our app array that we're trying to pass to new da new database. And I can prove that by showing you that if we comment this out, instead we take this code here, make a new line, and return that array. And then we try again to load this. As you see, it's loading our configurations that we set in database.php. And these are the default configurations. If we go back to our command line interface, as you see, this is the same port and host numbers. Okay, so we know where the Redis config values are coming from, but we still don't know why it's looking for pRedis. Well, the reason is that this new database here call, this new database call is coming from this file here, database.php, it's in the same namespace, in the Redis namespace, and as you can see, it's looking for pRedis client up here, and it's using it in the logic in this class. Since we don't have pRedis yet, it's not going to work, and that's why we get the not found exception, all right? So now we know what's going on behind the scenes, but we still need the pRedis library because this pRedis library is going to allow us to communicate with Redis on the server using its different functions in PHP. pRedis is not the only option. There is also one called PHP Redis. The difference between the two is that pRedis is coded in PHP, while PHP Redis is coded in C. That means that you're going to see a drastic performance difference between the two, PHP Redis being a lot more performant. I haven't personally tested this. However, I've I've seen plenty of tests that show a drastic difference between the two. And if you're you plan on having a large scale application with a lot of concurrent users, a lot of traffic, you need to use PHP Redis. So why is Laravel loading pRedis by default? That's because pRedis is frankly a lot simpler to set up. It doesn't require as much. We can just put it in Composer and it works. While PHP Redis uh, ha has to have a little bit of different uh, configuration. And we'll go over PHP Redis in the next screencast. But in this screencast, let's go ahead and, and load pRedis in our composer.json file. It's very simple. All we have to do is add it in the require block. So we're going to do pRedis. All right, let's give that a try. I'm just going in my directory that has composer in it. I'm just going to do a composer update here so I can spell. And uh, this might take a little bit, so I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see here, everything installed successfully. And we can also check this by going back to our directories here. And we see that now there's a pRedis folder in our vendor directory. Okay, so this has the source code of it. You can go through here and check out the different files. Probably learn a lot by doing that actually. And now we can go back to our routes.php and uh, remember how this didn't work. Let's try it now again. And there you go. The entire Redis object is printed out. And as you can see, it's connecting to those default settings we looked out we looked at a few minutes ago and it also sh also shows you all the different functions that are available to you that you can use with pRedis in this object all right so let's just do a test and see uh, just very basic tests with redis so i can show you in the command line how it works and we'll just assign a variable redis to this okay and then we'll just do a Redis set. And this is setting a key, name it key one, and we'll say just test value. I can't type today for some reason. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and return Redis get key one. Okay. All right, so now let's refresh this again. And there you have it. 
the test value that we loaded with key one. And then let's go back to our command line. And if we go back in the Redis command line interface, we do keys to uh, the star lists, all the keys, and then we can do key one. And there you have it, the test value associated with key one. So this wraps up the introduction to Redis. In the next episodes, or in the, in the next one right after this, we're going to look at PHP Redis and how to install it. And then after that, we're going to dive into some use cases like uh, caching uh, views and uh, view counts and that kind of thing. Uh, thanks for watching.